See, I went to GameStop and I purchased the Xbox One Media Remote. Why did I do that? Well, very simply, um, despite the fact the voice uh, commands and the hand gestures are cool when you're in a living room, my problem with the uh, voice gestures or the voice commands is that you have to turn your um, stereo system down, and I have a 5.1 sound system that's really loud, so you have to turn that down to get recognized, otherwise the voice command doesn't work. And the hand gestures are really difficult to use. Um, let me demonstrate to that. Bring up the hand gesture. Um, this, my connect is right there, like you can see my connect. In order to bring up the hand gesture system, you basically put your hand up like this, right? You put your hand up, but sometimes it recognizes it right away, sometimes it does not. So what you have to do is you have to engage the system by saying Xbox. Xbox. Okay, then you put your hand up, and once you put your hand up, Connect uh, starts to recognize, I think. I uh, see my hands up. Hello? Xbox. fucking thing doesn't goddamn recognize it. I don't know, maybe it's because the uh, the space is dark and um, you notice there's no sound. Let me try it one more time. Xbox. Okay, see the thing about it is connect. I, I think um, people with lighter skin tones have more uh, have more um, easier time using a uh, connect but in any event the reason why I went and bought this thing was because for one thing the uh, hand gestures are kind of difficult to use and as you can see it comes up difficult let me try that shit again Xbox 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 okay come on come on come on god damn it recognize my hand you motherfucker Xbox. All right. Watch Fox News. Okay, see, the voice commands work okay most of the time, but the hand gesture, the hand gesture thing is, like, really difficult to use. Let me see if I can try to get this damn thing to come on. God damn it. Xbox. Xbox. fucking don't recognize the... all of a sudden let me try the other hand there it is you see that that's the hand gesture xbox go home xbox go home okay so you're able to pull by closing your hand you pull and you can drag or the the thing that bothers me is the fact that if i want to touch something like if i want to go here i have to push my hand forward in order to select. I don't like that. I don't like having to push forward to select. That's the reason why I wouldn't bother to get the Xbox Media Remote. So now I'm gonna open the Media Remote up and use so, it. This is the Xbox Media Remote. A very nice design, a very nice finish. So uh, this is it. It has a pretty, uh, it has actually a very, very nice design for $30. This is definitely better than the last one for the Xbox 360. Most of those, they weren't bad, but um, this one feels very premium. From what I've heard, this one has a backlight. Inside the uh, box, there are, uh, what is it called, uh, triple A batteries. I'm never a fan of triple A's. I always like double A's better, but you know, there's a triple A battery and it also comes with a guide. So I'm gonna obviously have to set it up from my Fios system and then see how it works. So what I'm gonna do is install them and let's see how it works. You actually have to read the manual in order to get this shit done. I was looking all over this thing and I absolutely could not figure out how to open it because the, the design is, the, the packaging is so tight on this design. This design, it doesn't, it, it's not like most remotes where you have an obvious slide. So basically I looked at the, um, the directions say to slide up from where it says Xbox. So I guess I'm supposed to push up this way. Yeah. Okay. And when you slide that part up, then it comes off. Okay. 
A very, very tight, high quality design though. I have to say, this actually feels like it's worth $30. So, this remote has a backlit keyboard, so when you uh, touch the guide button, you know, the thing lights up. So basically, the uh, controls are basically exactly what you'd expect. What I want is interested in is this thumb pad, and I wanted to see how well this thumb pad works, but let's see. Um, so let's see, let's see, let me see how I can do this. Alright, so... Um, you push and hold it, and uh, you get the backlight. Let's see. Um, right now, it's not synced to the system, so I guess that's the reason why it's not working yet. Let me figure it out. So basically, using this, you can set up everything using Xbox One Guide, and um, using this device you can uh, get to your YouTube videos like me. Yeah, I, I'm trying to do this in a way where you can see the remote and you know you see my DVDs and everything down there. So yeah, like okay, so I can go to my YouTube. I can go to YouTube. Let me see. I'm a DVD I'm a DVD hoarder. Look at all these DVDs. Look at all that shit. I got everything from the 1980s onwards. Look at that shit. All those DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. So, in any event, you use the one guide system to set up um, to set up uh, your audio receivers and this, that, and other. So, um, yeah, they've they pretty much taken care of it. Like that's how you do it. And uh, one of these buttons goes to your guide. This button is the guide button. The way this thing works is it's infrared only. It doesn't do anything using um, like radio signals. So that means you always have to point this this, this uh, remote right at the Xbox. If you don't point it right at the Xbox, you won't be able to control anything. So that's one of the downsides about using infrared. Now, um, yeah, you can set up an AV receiver, or audio video receiver. You can set up a television to use the uh, functionality. When you push and hold the uh, Xbox Guide button, of course it gives you the option to turn the console off or the controller off by itself. So I'm just going to put close. Um, other than that, everything pretty much works exactly like you'd expect. Uh, there's a back button here. There's a, a mute, volume up, volume down. It's very, very basic. It's a good looking remote. It's very basic. But see, I wanted it specifically. So that while I'm, uh, if I if I want to browse through my YouTube system, like if I can push the guide button, I can go home. If I want to browse through my YouTube, I can go straight to my YouTube, and I can watch my subscriptions like the McLaughlin Group, or I can watch my um, my own videos because I have my own videos. Like I, you see, I got Patrice O'Neill there, one of the best comedians ever, and. Um, you know, that that's basically what I wanted this thing for in the first place. So, um in that respect, it's really it's really good in that respect. You know? Now the one thing I am noticing is that the channel button is required to go up and down and browse. I'm not able to use like if I push if I push uh this, it doesn't the uh the actual D pad isn't causing this thing to advance. I have to use the up and down key, which I think that kind of doesn't make sense. I'm really surprised they did it like that, but the up and down channel key seems to be a guide right now. So I don't know if the left and right buttons work, but let me check. So if I go up to, uh, let's see, if I go up to my, what is it called? My, uh, if I go up to my, let's see if I go to my videos, if I push the middle button, nothing happens. Let me see if I push play, no, no, if I push volume up, if I push the middle button, nothing happens. So that means I'm thinking, yeah, I have to probably push the play button. So if I push play, nothing happens. If I push stop, nothing happens. That's odd. If I push left and right, nothing happens. I'm going to have to figure this out because this kind of doesn't make sense. The back button takes it back. The middle button selects, but I'm having trouble selecting this video, which I find very, very odd. 
and can't go left and right. I can only go up and down. I find that very odd. I may, I may have to figure this out a little bit more. For comparison, this Xbox One Media Remote costs $30. The Xbox 360 Remote that you see on the left, I believe, cost me in between $20 and $30. I'm really liking my Xbox 360 Media Remote more. The Xbox One remote is far more minimalist and um, offers far less functions, as you can see, wherein this 360 remote did just about everything. And um, it may I mainly used it to control my television and to control the Xbox, mainly. Um, I know it could um, read... Um, I know you, there was, it was possible, I believe, to use it for other things, but it was mainly there for the television and the Xbox. This Xbox One remote, it just, um, you know, it doesn't offer, um, you know, clear, defined audio-visual um, equipment add-ons, and it also doesn't allow you to specifically control a cable box. Basically, the Xbox One uh, media overlay is laying on top of whatever um, service you use. Like, I use Fios instead of using cable. So even though Fios is, you know, more, um, it ha it offers way more than a cable, don't get me wrong. The only thing about it is there's only so much of it you can access when you're using a remote like this. You have to use the Verizon Fios remote. The Verizon Fios remote offers you access to the apps and the widgets and this, that, and the other. So if we just talk about which one do I really prefer? I really like the Xbox 360 one better. This one looks good, feels good, and um, it will allow me to navigate a bit. But I'm a little disappointed that this um, guide circle D-pad, I'm really surprised that this doesn't have more um, control over the, uh, the, the squares or the tiles that you're actually um, focused on. So if you're considering buying it as the end-all solution to navigating around your Xbox, you might want to think twice about it because it doesn't do that much. And furthermore, the volume system won't even work beyond the television. I have my uh, television connected to my surround sound using Toslink. I have no control whatsoever of my um, Blu-ray 5.1 receiver with this remote because there's no audio video um, clearly defined um, function for this. So if you're playing your Xbox with a television and that's all you have connected to it, you're fine. But the second that you try to go beyond that, you're going to have a problem. Basically, it appears to me that Xbox One is designed to be in a living room. You're supposed to be able to use voice commands. You're supposed to be able to use uh, uh, hand gestures. But the only problem that I'm seeing is that it wasn't designed to be used with secondary or third-party equipment. I'm pretty sure it'll work with anything Microsoft puts out. Or perhaps they expected you to buy the headphones too rather than have a 5.1 system. So this way the system could always hear your voice commands. But um, basically it really appears to me that the only thing you're expected to be able to use this for is a television and the Xbox itself. So... Hey, it's $30. It's not a big deal. I, I blow more money than that on gas every couple days, so that's nothing. But um, if you're considering buying one of these, just understand that this is definitely not the end-all, and you still may have to use voice and uh, hand gestures.